guys, that's an all aluminum boat. It's pretty wicked how that can be all aluminum. That's crazy. It's a nice looking boat, man. I'm gonna put a link above so you guys can see the inside of that boat. It's, it's absolutely stunning. I told you guys when I was freezing in Seattle, it was raining, it was cold. I was like, man, I just see this boat that belongs in the Miami or the Fort Lauderdale, maybe Palm Beach show. What a difference of weather, huh? Oh my gosh, so nice to be here in the sunshine. Isn't it crazy? Oh, oh, what a difference. How one, you know, I mean, we're pretty far from, from Seattle, but uh, we got Jeff here, guys, from Coastal Craft, and he told us, you told us, you told us that there was gonna be a 33 over here in Miami and it's here. Absolutely, yeah, we're happy to have this 33 Express in the show. Uh, a little different configuration than the boat that you were on in Seattle. This boat has got a cockpit seating area. It's not set up for sport fishing like the boat you saw in Seattle, uh, but it does offer the same social interior. It just runs right outside now with these big cockpit decks. So why don't you come take a look? Sa same aluminum boat, right? Absolutely. Aluminum built boat. All, all aluminum. Oh, okay, explain that real quick before we jump on. So maybe other people didn't catch that other video. So this is all aluminum and then show, uh, explain that process, Jeff. Yeah, so we've got complete aluminum construction, hull decks and cabin, all aluminum. Uh, our boats are typically fared and painted. So we've got a yacht finished exterior that matches the yacht finished interior, which is not typical in boats this size in North America. Uh, to see aluminum boats at this level of finish, typically it's, they're much larger. Um, but we've, this, we've been building these uh, uh, higher end finished aluminum boats for the last 24 years. All right, guys, let's step aboard. Let's go inside, Alfred, take a look. All right, guys, once again, we're, we're stepping in the coastal craft. So, immediately, and I got a camera there in the way, but immediately I notice the difference that this boat is, is made differently. So, it doesn't feel like a fishing boat. It feels like, like a, I guess like a cruising boat, very comfortable day boat. Tell me a little bit about the differences. Right, so again, the same, the same cockpit uh, size, just a different configuration. So instead of live wells and fishing amenities, we, we built this uh, built-in seating with the table. So more of a social cockpit, another seat out here uh, for, for hanging about. So just to enjoy the, the weather, to enjoy the environment. Again, if you're in South Florida, you want to be in the water, so we've got the, the dive door and the transom door, so we're in and out of the water. Uh, again, running into the main cabin, everything's on one level. A very social open boat. Again, this boat, uh, like the boat you saw in Seattle, has a large sunroof. It does have a large glass panel behind the sunroof, so it's more like a convertible from the front right to the back. So I see that you have the door completely open, and as I walked in there just now, it feels like uh, it's it's nice and cool in there. How are you guys not losing the air, the air conditioning in there? Well, we're certainly losing a little bit, but we oversize the AC units uh, enough that when you do have the top open and the doors open, the, the temperature inside the cabin is substantially cooler. So we'll, well, nice. let's walk in real quick. Uh, let's let's look inside this 33 Coastal Craft. And uh, Jeff, uh, if you if you can, can you close the door up so they can go ahead and absolutely see that. So I already immediately I noticed a couple things here. Like so, we're in Miami. The door was open up top, uh, up up the up, up back there, and you have this sunroof completely wide open as well. And you're still kicking the AC, so you're comfortable. You feel open. I mean, this is this is a very very comfortable, well lighted uh, section to go ahead and hang out with. Yeah, it's really nice. So the heat gets a little overwhelming outside. It's nice to be able to close the door. And if it gets if it gets really hot, you can close this roof just with this button here, and, and that way you can uh, completely be self-contained. <laughs> it's just giving me flashbacks of of me begging you to close with the freezing over there in the other in the other show, guys. It was you got to watch that video. You got this cool shade here that comes across. So really keep all the sun out, so you can see now you don't have any sun streaming, very little sun streaming into the cabin, so it really makes a big difference. The temperature dropped immediately in here. Huge. That is incredible. Yeah, it's pretty nice to have that option. Also, with this uh, 
Webasto sunroof and Ocean Air blind. They also have a screen option. So you can pull this screen, which is intended to be a bug screen, but it's also a bit of a diffuser. So if you want to have the top open, you can have the screen pulled and it does diffuse some of the light from coming inside as well. That is, that is incredible. Jeff, I, I see that this is very similar to the other one here. You have this adjustable table here that you can adjust and, and I think we, you said that that becomes a berth uh, or a sleeping area? Yeah, the table drops in and then there's a fill cushion that makes this into a second sleeping berth on board the boat. So it's uh, 82 inches long and uh, 42 inches wide. So it's a, it's, a, it's a generous single, bit of a tight double. Uh, and it's, a, it's a nice place to, to lounge. To. Owners will drop this, cushion it out, throw some throw pillows around and just hang out on this couch. And you have, uh, I, I think right there, you got a refrigerator. What's what's uh, yeah, side by side fridge freezer, uh, large pantry, uh, lots of drawers both underneath the settee on both sides and in the galley itself. Uh, we try to uh, maximize the space uh, below the windows uh, instead of having upper cabinets in the boat, uh, just because it creates more of an open feeling, uh, less visibility restrictions if you can minimize upper cabinets. So tell me a little bit about the helm. Yeah, so we've got the, the, again, like the boat in Seattle, two 16-inch Garmin displays. Uh, we're using the uh, Seastar Optimus 360 joystick steering, which is a very nice feature when you're getting into tight spots like this, uh, this marina. So you know what I want to do, since it's so easy? Can you open that shade again? Absolutely. Because it's, put, it's, it's putting a shadow on the camera, and I, I want them to see exactly how everything, there, there it is. So it's, it's so simple. You can just open, close it, depending on how the elements are. And uh, obviously, you, you have the same uh, shockwave system over here that, that the other one had? Yeah, or? running the uh, shockwave S5 suspension seat. It's, it's really a must. I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of their suspension seats. What, what was the beam on this uh, particular boat, Jeff? 11 feet. 11 feet. So this is a, this is essentially the, the the twin of the one that we saw in, in uh, Seattle. It is. And we it is our third. We call this our 33 foot express. So it's a 33 foot model, although it's a 41 foot overall length. So it's a big 33 foot. I boat. see. This one has actual rails uh, on the bow that the other one did not have. That's correct. Yeah, we did put rails on this boat. We put a low profile starting low at the back of the cabin up to a full height in the bow, incorporating the, the full height and bow spread as well. And uh, one of the things that I really liked about when I walked this particular boat last time, I was like, I was so impressed with the finishes and the details. I mean, so many details, even on the pro fish versions that we did walkthroughs on. So, like the boat you saw in Seattle, this is a black walnut finish as well. Very similar quartz countertops. Um, this is a fairly popular color combination that people like to see in this boat. It, it goes well with the the vast windows that we that we offer in this model. Let's take a look at uh, the cabin area. Let me tell you something, Jeff. It looks so nice having actual daylight coming in. I mean, I mean, it w it was nice before, but it's it's nice to see this with nice big blue skies and yeah, you know, it gives that whole South Florida feel. And then we have a we have a head right here, right? We do. Yeah, we have the day head as well. Now, some of the questions that some people were asking you, they are saying, "Well, why isn't there a shower?" That is an option, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, we we uh, put an outside shower on all these boats, and we do offer the either a wet head, uh, which is a shower within the head option, or we do a separate head and shower configuration. Okay, I just want people to know that because some people probably were assuming that that that, that wasn't an option. Um, we specialize in, in customizing all the boats for our customers, so you pretty much get what you want. So here at this show, this boat, like the way it's specced out here, what is somebody reasonably going to expect to pay for something like this? Base, base price on this boat is $515, and depending on the list of options, you could spend up to $750. More when you put sea keepers and some of the higher end finishes through. And, and this has a, a, a pair of uh, 400 Verados? Uh, this particular boat is uh, 350 Verados. Two 350s. The boat that you were on in Seattle had the 400. How, how fast is this one going with the 350s? Uh, 45. 45, and what would you say a good cruise is on this? Uh, 
Yeah, 38 is a comfortable cruise on this boat. Nice. So, all right, so we got a we got a nice beam. What about the fuel capacity on, on this one? Same as the boat you're in Seattle, 330 gallons. 330. So it's all up to the customer. I mean, can can you rate this for a 450, twin 450s if somebody wanted to? Absolutely. I yeah. don't see why they would, but this I mean. This boat was designed for, for, up, for trips if you want, so you can put up to a trip 400 on this boat. Up to trips, oh man. All right, guys, we're over here. We're gonna take a look at the bow real quick. And uh, I want them to see that front area because I didn't really get on there per se. So I wanna jump on there now that we got some rails and it's not raining. So one of the things I noticed immediately, you know, is that we have a nice little step and we also have a rail so we can hold on. So. All right, so I'm going to jump towards the bow, and uh, let's hope I don't lose this camera. <laughs> Come on, guys. Let's go. Okay, so one of the good things is that there's rails right here. So, you know, I feel comfortable. I'm, I'm holding on, and actually my leg is touching the other rail. So I see you got a, a full windlass here. Tell me about some of the features and stuff that's, uh, that's going on over here. Well, we use the uh, Maxwell RC10 windlass uh, ultra anchor, foot switches. There's an access hatch to, to get below into the anchor locker to, to clear any jam ups and give it a, a washout. Uh, as you mentioned, we're using the uh, bow rails on this particular boat, the pulpit and bow sprit. Hatch for the, uh, into the stateroom for deck hatch. We're using the large intra wipers. Not that uh, rains as much of a consideration. I shouldn't say that, it rains in South Florida too, it just doesn't rain as long. Yeah. It rains in the summer right. a lot, right. but not, 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 not as crazy as every day. Um, From this perspective, you can really get a, uh, an advantage point to see how large that sunroof is on this, uh, on this boat. It, it, it is, and I think uh, uh, one of the things that I like about this particular model is well, I like the aluminum aspect of it, and I like the, the fact that it has so much light. And if you want to just, just get rid of the light, you can. You guys got that option. Um, one of the questions that some of the people were asking in the comment section, I want, to, I want to get your feedback on that. Some people were asking, well, what are the disadvantages now of aluminum in, you know, like in a, in a full-time saltwater environment? How, how would that be different from, say, a fiberglass boat? Well, there's some considerations, particularly as a builder, when you're building aluminum boats for saltwater use, you have to, you have to be mindful of uh, corrosion, you have to be mindful of a dissimilar metal corrosion between painted aluminum and stainless. Uh, but the, the processes that we use um, to, to prevent and minimize any corrosions have come a long ways in the last 10, 15 years. And, uh, with the paint manufacturers uh, coming on board with uh, aluminum applications uh, and methods to isolate uh, stainless steel from painted aluminum. We've really seen very little uh, concern with any corrosion uh, over the last 24 years in uh, painted aluminum boats. So you just have to follow certain uh, considerations. Now, what, what, what would you think are some of the advantages? Like, I, I, can, I can definitely see a lot of the huge advantages up there in Washington, rocks and all that crazy stuff. I mean, even though that's, it's, it's a little different environment, but what would you think are some of the, the advantages of aluminum here in the, in the South Florida, maybe people who want to go back and forth to Bimini and stuff like that? Well, I think the advantages are the same no matter where you're at. I mean, it really comes down to strength. Uh, there's a reason that the you know, U.S. Coast Guard and most of the commercial, high-speed commercial boats are built on aluminum. It's because of the strength, the engineered strength in the, in the boats. It's very hard to, um, to achieve using fiberglass, um, that same strength when you're talking about those speeds that these boats go. So the, the strength, it really comes down to strength and durability. And it's not just from a safety aspect, it's from a longevity aspect. You know, the, if you start with a, a solid shell, um, then everything inside the boat uh, is solid as well. So your interior foundations uh, are built on, uh, you know, strong um, framing, which prevents creaking and, 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 and uh, rattles throughout the boat that you might see over time in a fiberglass boat. So. Well, guys, you heard everything there. I try to answer as many questions as you guys had in the prior video. I want to thank Jeff and the people at Coastal Craft for letting me get on this 33 Express again. Uh, how was that uh, response, 60,000 views in like a month? 
Yeah, that was fantastic. That was actually just over a week and a half, I think. And, Isn't that nuts? Uh, yeah, it's been great to uh, to see the people uh, following it and viewing it. Uh, we're obviously very happy. Where is this uh, boat going to be after this show? Is there going to is there going to be somewhere else? Maybe we can tease them to go to. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be in uh, South Florida. It's going to be in the Fort Lauderdale area, and then uh, we plan to put it in the Palm Beach Boat Show if it's still available. To us, and as I mentioned in the other video, the uh, silver sportfish version, we're going to ship that to South Florida and hopefully have that in the pond. Nice. Show. So this one is, is is for sale. It is for sale. Oh, guys, it's for sale. I mean, and and uh, assuming this one's sold, how long is the build process if somebody wanted to get something custom on their on their liking? For typically a year. A year. Okay. All right, guys. A year out. Jeff from Coastal Craft. Guys, we're here. Um, you know I was screaming last time to go ahead and go inside the cabin because it was too cold? Now can we go into the cabin because it's too hot? Absolutely. Let's do this. Let's go guys. check it out. All right. We're out of here at the Miami International Boat Show here with Coastal Craft. Today's show was brought to you by the following sponsors. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And always remember, amazingness, that's what we do.